So I recently finished reading Hawaii's Story by Hawaii's Queen, a memoir by Queen Lilio Kalani, Hawaii's last queen. And I must say that I really enjoyed it. Her use and command of language is so eloquent and masterful. Throughout the book, she chronicles her life from birth through the eventual overthrow of the Hawaiian government. And I want to share three life lessons that I learned from her while reading her book. And you know what? She never even went grad private school. So the first thing I want to share is about generosity and legacy. After Lilio Kalani's husband, John Dominus, dies, she receives these financial statements from the Freemason organization that he was involved with. And as she's looking over them, she didn't even realize that he was so generous over the course of his life. And in fact, it was something that she was proud of for him. But his generosity got me thinking about legacy and what does that actually mean? I recently attended a funeral and one of the speakers at the funeral mentioned that there's a difference between an inheritance and a legacy. An inheritance is something that you pass on to a recipient and eventually it fades. While a legacy is something that you impart in others that even transcends one's death. And so it got me thinking about our legacy here in Hawaii. It's more than just the money that we leave behind, the houses or the possessions. Really, what is our legacy gonna be for the next generation? Because I'm starting to think that it's more about time and those values that we pass on. The things are nice, you know, resources are nice, wouldn't turn that down. But it's really the time that you spent with others as well as the values that you instill in them while spending that time. And I think about the generosity of my grandparents and the legacy that they leave behind. They took so much time to watch me and my brother, me in particular, so that my parents could work because, you know, in Hawaii, it's pretty expensive. And for most families, they need two incomes. So in order to do that and to accommodate that, they watched me and my brother. They bathed us, they fed us, they entertained us, they probably disciplined us. I remember that and they made such a huge impact on my life. And the legacy that they left in me was just to emphasize the importance of family and making sure to cultivate that closeness among the members. And it's one of the things that I wanna strive for in building our own family today. This closeness, this bond, and just that assurance that no matter what happens, no matter where you go, that you have a place that you can call home, that you can always come and just talk story, eat and hang out. And I also have to remind myself that my legacy is not everything that's shared on social media. It may last for a while online, maybe it'll last forever on the internet, but I'm more than just the videos that I leave behind because the view count and the likes are just going to be buried. But what I hope is that my kids or my grandkids or great grandkids, they can just hear the words that I'm sharing and hopefully those values that I currently have will be passed on through generations. And the second thing I want to mention is to notice the unnoticed. So there's this event where Queen Lilio Kalani is invited to the Queen of England's Jubilee. And so she attends the event and she finds herself in the center of the room, basically the power position. Yet one of the people in her party, a Duke Connet, notices this elderly woman to the outside of the room just by herself, a lady, Alice Berry. And the Duke goes out to meet this elderly lady and just talk to her, notice her, to make her feel important and encouraged. And out of all of the events that happened that evening with all of the beautiful dresses and gowns and jewelry, it seems like for Lilio Kalani, that was the standout event of the evening. And so I appreciate her mentioning the Duke for two reasons. The first is that I know how it feels to be overlooked and ignored. When I was in Oregon, I used to work at the zoo as a custodian, and it was a really interesting job, but I often felt like it was part of my job to be invisible like the guests at the zoo just i just had to be in the background and i shouldn't be out there unless i was called upon it was basically just clean the kitchens clean the bathrooms make sure that the paper towel dispenser has enough paper towels take out the trash and sometimes the silence was nice i could just concentrate on whatever i had to do and then i could just go home for the day but there were other times where i kind of wish that people would have at least said hi or acknowledged me and so because of that experience, I try to acknowledge the custodian staff as well as food service workers because I know how it feels. I mean, I'm not going there and talking story to them for 10 minutes, but you know, just a simple hi, just to recognize them. And it really does show appreciation. By the way, I'm testing a new selfie stick. This can actually go further away, but 
Just wanted to give it a quick try. The second reason I appreciate her mentioning this event is there are times when I'm out, I'm at certain events or parties, and I wish people would reach out to me and talk with me. I mean, I know I make these YouTube videos and I'm talking to a camera, but oftentimes in real life, I'm a pretty quiet person. And if you were to meet me on just a normal, regular day, I can be pretty quiet. Like if left unchecked, I probably could go an entire evening without really talking with anyone. Okay, we're gonna go extra wide now. Is this too crazy? But the thing is, I wasn't always like that. I remember when I was younger, I was pretty social. But as I've gotten older, that seems to have gone away. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe it was just spending too much time on the mainland. But I'm working on it. And I admire what the Duke did back then. Noticing the unnoticed. It seems so counterculture to how our culture is today. Where oftentimes the camera and attention is pointed at ourselves, which I know is ironic saying that, seeing that I'm making this YouTube video. But I do hope that collectively we start to notice the people that often go unnoticed. Just a simple nod or a hi or a how is it, it can make someone's day. And the final thing is sometimes, well, let's face it, most times, doing what you believe is right is hard. Lilio Kalani was offered the opportunity to play nice with the missionary party as they were rising in power after the bayonet constitution situation. She would have taken the throne as Kalakaua would have retired, but she chose not to. And I'm sure that decision was difficult. I'm sure there are a lot of things that she had to think about in especially refusing that offer from them. She knew that they'd probably be her enemies for the rest of her life. In that moment, she could have taken the easier path. Almost like in the movies, right? Where the bad guy offers the good guy an opportunity to help them, to join them. And in that split second, we're like, don't do it, don't do it, even though we're, we know they're not gonna do it. The temptation of power or wealth is so great that in those tough moments when the pressure is on, they're able to say no. And we admire them for it. But this is real life. And how does that actually apply to me? Well, I'm not receiving deals from supervillains in real life every day. But I do think that the temptation to give in comes in much subtler ways. For example, I know that there are ways to get an affordable housing unit by lying. And I'm not here to call anybody out, right? I'm just saying that it's possible. And that temptation is there. And of course, it's for good reason, right? Housing is so expensive here. And when you're presented with these opportunities or options or strategies, right? People might call them that. And sure, you can get away with it, but at the end of the day, it's just not right. And doing what's right when others seem to be getting away with it is extremely challenging, especially when you're in the heat of the moment. It feels like the only way to get ahead is to bend the rules a little bit. I mean, after all, Everyone's doing it, right? And if you don't do it, you're just gonna get left behind. And besides, if you don't do it, who do you think you are? You better than us, is what they might say. But I just wasn't raised that way, you know? And it's one of the things that, despite all our differences between me and my wife, that line of integrity and rule following is one of the things that we both agree on. Now, we're not perfect. Doesn't mean that we follow every single rule. And if we don't, someone's just gonna like nail us and say, hey, I thought you followed every single rule. You said that in your video. It is something that we do want to try to emphasize. And I hope that we can pass it on to our kids, that sense of right and wrong. And again, despite the differences between me and my wife, I'm glad that we can stick together on that one. And so I learned a lot from Queen Lilio Kalani through her memoir. And I highly recommend the book to, again, anyone who's interested in Hawaiian history. But I also highly recommend it for someone who wants to gain a better understanding of a native Hawaiian perspective. It's not the native Hawaiian perspective, but it's a pretty significant one and one that I think holds a lot of value. And it's unfortunate that when I learned about Hawaiian history in high school, we didn't learn it like this. We didn't learn it through stories. We learned about names and dates and events and a lot of it just seemed very stale just to memorize it for whatever test that we had coming up. And then after that, we totally forgot about it. And I hope that this is something that they require local schools to read, especially those high school students. Because it was written by someone who was there, who was part of Hawaiian history at its most crucial moment, for better or for worse. Her story is both heartwarming and tragic, but I suppose that's how all of our lives are, where we have seasons of prosperity and seasons of hardship. But through it all, 
She never gave up on Hawaii and its people. So thanks for watching and aloha. Hello.